everything might not be fun. Yeah, the politicians keep saying, what's why is their healthcare system so expensive? And like, duh. How does that make any sense? We'll figure it out. This is the thing, I'm just getting totally engaged now, and I don't know what to do. So it's a windy day in Patapsco Park, and um, nice day, spring is starting. I wanted to talk a little about immunization. And by the way, it's a little windy, so excuse, uh, excuse the sound quality, which I don't understand how to fix. Um, so immunization is really important. If you look at the last hundred years, there's probably not much more that has helped people to live longer than immunization. It is so much more important than all the piddly things that we as doctors do for you, like stents and cholesterol medicine and over-controlling this and that and medicines for osteoporosis, things we've talked about. Immunization is way more important. But as with everything else in American medicine, it always goes a little too far because there's profit to be made. So, for instance, there, there's a new shingles vaccine out, which is great. It seems like a really good vaccine. And shingles is awful. Um, so I'm encouraging my patients to get it. But, as is often the case, it was studied in a very select group of people. People who had not gotten the previous shingles vaccine. So since so many other people have gotten the previous shingles vaccine, and now they want the new one, I, I don't know how to advise them. I, I say get it, but we have never studied people like you. We don't know how it's going to work. Why do they do that? Because... They know if they study people who have not gotten the previous shingles vaccine, it's going to be more effective. It's going to look more effective, so the results will look better. Now, meanwhile, the old shingles vaccine, when it first came out, was a miracle vaccine. Everybody got it. It was really expensive. And as further studies went on, it was shown that it's really not that great anyway. Well, another vaccine has hit the market several years ago, and now everybody's giving it. They call it the second pneumonia vaccine. The second pneumonia vaccine. So even my patients who go for the shingles vaccine, the pharmacy says, do you want the second pneumonia vaccine? And they say, sure, and they get it. So it's called Prenvar. It's put out by a drug company, and there's been one study on Prenvar. One study. A study done by the drug company that made it. And it's a study done on a selective group of people. It was done in the Netherlands. Why in the Netherlands? Because in the Netherlands, nobody gets the old pneumonia vaccine. So they were studying it on people who have never had any kind of pneumonia vaccine. Again, so the results look better. If they had studied it on someone who had already had a previous pneumonia vaccine, the result would have probably been inconsequential. It did nothing. We know that. So they do it on people who have not had it. And interestingly, even though the only people in this small drug company sponsored study have never had the old Pneumovax, old pneumonia vaccine, even though no one's had that in the study, the CDC and other groups are recommending that people get both vaccines. Both of them. Now, how does that make any sense? I mean, people have gotten this old Pneumovax vaccine. It's not that effective. It helps a little bit. People get it. As a doctor, if I don't give it to you, I will be dinged on my quality indicators and that's bad for me. For you, probably doesn't make that much of a difference if you're a healthy person. But a lot of people get it and it lasts a lifetime. So now they come out with this new one that covers some different strains. And they, and they study it on people who've never had the original one and tell you you have to get both. So why is that? Why are we doing this kind of thing? In fact, it's so, it's such bad science to do that because it is possible that if you get both vaccines, that they work less well than if you get one vaccine. We're not sure if that's the case or not. So how could I in good conscience recommend you getting this new Prenbar vaccine if I don't know how it's going to work on you if you've already had the old one? The other thing is the Prenbar vaccine, even in the one study that was done on it, didn't save anybody's life. It did prevent some episodes of pneumonia, very few, just a couple people out of a thousand, but no one's life was saved. Isn't that important? when we're looking at a vaccine. So now we're giving people a second vaccine. We don't know what it's gonna to do to you, long-term or short-term. We don't think it's gonna save your life. We don't know how it's gonna affect the vaccine you've already had.
people are making a lot of money on this vaccine. Why did the CDC recommend people get both vaccines? Well, big article in the paper did reveal that a lot of people in the CDC worked for the drug company that makes this new vaccine. So I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but that's very disturbing that they should recommend this without any research backing it up and they have stocks in the company that makes it. Again, like with the uh, like with other things that the CDC recommends, we want to trust this organization, but there are other issues that get involved in, in, in how they make their decisions, like with Tamiflu, how the company that makes Tamiflu donates money to the CDC, and the evidence doesn't show that Tamiflu works in any meaningful way, and yet they recommend it. Why? So I do want to say that when you go to get a second pneumonia vaccine, this is what they're talking about, Prenbol. I don't recommend it to any of my patients because there's no data to support it at all. And similarly with the shingles vaccine, I do recommend it because it looks good, but it wasn't studied on people who had the old shingles vaccine. So how do we know? We're being given false information because people are benefiting by the fact that we know less. The less we know, the better. Let's study people who are not like the actual patients getting it and the outcomes might be better. Let's pick a patient population that's gonna make our outcomes look good. And there are so many studies done that way. So yeah, because I, I am very pro-immunization, I am not pro all immunization. I actually do believe there has to be a limit to what we give people and the immunizations we give them have to make sense, have to have proven efficacy either for them as an individual or for society. Right? People who don't get measles vaccine can hurt all of society because now they're going to spread a, a virus that has largely been eradicated. So we have to look at the public health aspect and the individual aspect. And on both counts, this Prenvar vaccine fails miserably. Costs a lot of money. People are getting rich, but not for you. So again, this is one of the examples how research is designed to fool you, to manipulate, manipulate you, and to deceive you. And all the doctors fall in line and give this vaccine. And I wouldn't be surprised if next year, as a clinical guideline, that we're going to be required to give this vaccine. And then, frankly, I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't believe in it. Anyway, back to my run on this beautiful day. Take care. Hey, so if you're equally annoyed by our dysfunctional healthcare system and all the garbage you're being fed, then give me an email, log on to my website, which is listed down here. Let me know what you want me to talk about and I'll just keep feeding you information and we'll discuss this and hopefully make some changes. See you later.